So Jamie Oliver asked a, a room full of first graders to identify some common fruits and vegetables. They failed miserably. They couldn't tell the difference between potatoes and tomatoes. He showed them this purple thing over there, gave them the hint that it started with the word egg. Some boisterous kid jumped up and said, egg salad. Um, so this is a sign of a, a bigger problem at hand here, a problem that this man, Richard Love, wrote a book about and started a movement around called uh, Nature Deficit Disorder. It's basically the tragic disconnection between children and nature. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that today. So, no child left inside. The benefits of nature for children are pretty, pretty uh, well known. Kids that spend time outdoors are less likely to be obese. They have better times, ability concentrating. They're less depressed. Um, they foster a, a, a stronger attachment and awareness of nature. But this is not just a, a, an issue that ki uh, kids are facing. It's something that the society at large is faci facing. So how do we restore our relationship with nature? I mean, that's the fundamental question that we're, that we're asking and we're trying to ad address here today. So unfortunately, billions of dollars aren't being spent to help you, uh, you know, drive your awareness and your brand recognition for the plants and animals on your street. Um, so how are we going to do this? Uh, we have to be creative. We have to um, work together. We have to develop some new tools. We have to harness technology in a new way. So you might have been able to recognize a lot of the images in those boxes on the previous slide, but what about the images in the boxes on this slide? Uh, you know, it's, it's basically trying to point out to you that our, our eco IQ is, is, is struggling, it's suffering. It's, it's about building this eco literacy, awareness and knowledge of what's around you. And here's where the move, movement's at today. That guy, Richard Love, who wrote the book, he start, he's a chair of this organization, childrennature.org. And basically, they're trying to get students, kids, adults, parents, older people, younger people outside to reclaim nature, step foot on, you know, take some, take some hikes, learn about the flora and fauna. And the other thing that comes up, too, when I was doing research on this is that, you know, Maybe nature is that miracle drug that we're trying to look for. I mean, it, it fights obesity, it improves concentration, it fights depression. So instead of maybe pumping kids full of Adderall, maybe we just take them on a walk every once in a while, you know? Take a fucking hike, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. So let's switch gears for a second. Let's talk about citizen science. It's a little ironic that at a time where we're so disconnected from nature, it's actually easier than ever to contribute and work and, 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 and um, get involved with projects that are doing great things for science and for nature. This organization, scienceforcitizens.net, has a, a database of all sorts of projects you can get involved with. Some of my favorite are Galaxy Zoo. You can look at pictures of galaxies and help astronomers classify them. Folded is a game you can download and play to help scientists determine how uh, proteins fold uh, optimally. And there's nature-specific citizen science projects as well. Project Squirrel, University of Illinois in Chicago, they're tracking squirrel populations across North America. Mushroom Mapping Project is with uh, Urban Landscape Lab at Columbia and also with Stratospore, and they're looking at wild mushroom populations across the country. But there's a fucking problem, and it's painful to get involved. You don't know, number one, where to find out information about them. If you do, you got a complicated web entry form. you got to download a piece of paper and take it out in the wild and write it and then mail it in to some guy in Chicago. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. And so we're, you know, I started thinking, what if you could harness the power of a mobile device? Everyone here has probably got a smartphone, an iPhone or an Android. What if you can make a platform that was focused specifically on citizen science and getting reconnected and learning about the nature around you? It, it was about wildlife reconnaissance. It was about collaboration. It was something free that anyone could fucking use. The usage user scenario would go something like this. You're out in the wild. You see an interesting organism. You want to learn more about it or you want to share your encounter with it. You grab a photo of it. You add some text and tags. You shoot it out to a database. You share it with the community. Or you can see what's been spotted around you like a location-based field guide. So he said, fuck it. We built it. And we gave it out for free. We hit the app store last week. Project Noah. You can share your encounters with nature. You got a location-based field guide. And remember those missions I was talking about? You have field missions so you can actually use your phone to contribute to real-world scientific data and research. Um, and that slide that I showed you earlier on, that's a sample from our plants category of people that are already submitting sightings. So uh, we've, had, we've had hundreds of spottings already. We've got over 1,000 downloads of the application over a week. We're on Treehugger. We're on Make. We're on Good Blog. And it's all free. We're giving it away for free. And the data that we're collecting, we're going to give to the masses. There's no, there's no, we're not trying to create a walled garden or keep this shit for ourselves. We're going to give it to teachers. We had a sixth grade uh, class in San Diego do a nature hike, gave them the KML data. They were able to recreate their, their trail and learn more about their, their, their experience. So in the spirit of E.O. Wilson and his Encyclopedia of Life, which is this movement to catalog every known living species on the fucking planet, we're, we're embarking on this effort to create a new Noah's Ark. But this time, we're going to help Noah collect all the species on the fucking planet with our phones. And so get outside, take a walk, take a fucking hike, literally. Get involved with the local pro programs and organizations. And if not, this guy's gonna beat your ass. So 
Our battle cry at Project Noah is cell phone scientists unite. I have to give a shout out to my collaborator, collaborators, my cohorts. Uh, Martin Separly, who's here up here. Uh, Bruno Cruz should be back here. Peter Horvath is in Toronto. Um, come and find us on the web. Download our application. Let's get back into nature, guys. <laughs>